It's been more than seven years since five police officers in Dallas were killed during an ambush attack at the end of a peaceful protest in the deadliest incident for U.S. law enforcement since 9-11. Officials at the time said the heavily armed sniper set out to kill as many white officers as he could following a demonstration against the fatal police shootings of black men in Minnesota and Louisiana that same week in July of 2016. Now, the doctor who led the trauma team that valiantly worked to try to save the lives of the officers who were shot is out with a new book describing in detail what he witnessed. It's entitled, The Bodies Keep Coming. And in it, Dr. Brian H. Williams not only narrates the events of that dark night in Dallas, but also reveals deeply personal details about the grief and anger of being a black doctor on the front lines of trauma care. In the days that followed that attack in Dallas, Dr. Williams expressed his frustrations at an emotional press conference. I abhor what has been done to these officers and agree with their families. I understand the anger and the frustration and distrust of law enforcement, but they are not the problem. The problem is the lack of open discussions about the impact of race relations in this country. And I think about it every day that I was unable to save those cops when they came here that night. It weighs on my mind constantly. This killing, it has to stop. Black men dying and being forgotten, people retaliating against the people that are sworn to defend us. We have to come together and end all this. And Dr. Williams joins us now. He's also running for Congress in Texas's 32nd district. We thank you for coming on the show. Um, I'm going to start with July 7th, 2016. And I would like for you to describe for us what you confronted in that ER and why you knew you had to write it down and also do more. Well, July 7, 2016, it's one of those nights that is always with me. Uh, I, I think about it every day. Uh, our teams are we're trained to deal with these uh, multiple sh uh, shootings, uh, but that night was something different. And losing three police officers that night, uh, I had to do something I've done way too many times, which is change out of bloodied scrubs, put on clean scrubs, button up my white coat, and talk to a family and deliver the news of someone they cared about being lost to gun violence. It was a pivot point for me. And afterwards, uh, I, I literally, I found a quiet corner of the hospital and I fell to the floor and I was crying. It was just one of those nights I just was overcome with emotion. But it's the aftermath when I realized that I, as a trauma surgeon, can only do so much within the hospital to promote healing in the community. I had to get outside the hospital to do more work within the community. So uh, now you're running for Congress. Um, you have been a trauma surgeon for decades. Your book is called The Bodies Keep Coming. We have an epidemic of mass shootings in this country. Our kids are afraid to go to school. And yet so many in Congress seem so incapable of doing anything on this front except for small measures. Why do you think you're different? Uh, my my background is something that will be totally unique in Congress, and you can you can learn more about that at drbrianwilliamsforcongress.com. But I'm an, I'm a veteran. I've trained on these weapons. As a trauma surgeon, I've dealt with the carnage up close and personal. I've had to tell family members about this, and I've also served in Congress as, a, as an advisor, where I had a chance to work on monumental legislation to promote gun safety in this country with the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act that was passed last year. So I bring a perspective to Congress that is absent right now in this debate, one that we can put forth to promote solutions that will keep our communities and our children safe. Dr. Williams, good morning. Thank you for being here this morning. I, I was remembering that.
press conference because it took so many of us took notice of it back in July of 2016 when usually you have trauma surgeons come out, explain what happened, what they saw, and extend their regrets and sympathies to the families. You, of course, did all that, but then went a step further as we just watched in that clip. Why were you compelled to make that statement beyond the medical side of that story about the societal piece of it? Was there thought that went into that? Did you hesitate to do that? And why ultimately did you? I actually initially refused to go to the press conference. It was my wife who compelled me to attend, to just mm. sit there and be present so that the nation could see that there was a black doctor trying to save these police officers because there was a lot about race and policing that was mixed up with this, uh, with this tragedy. Uh, but as I sat there throughout the press conference, what was unsaid really didn't sit right with me. We had to address that this gun violence and racial justice and policing, uh, we had to come together to put an end to their escalating violence. So in the moment I spoke, uh, assuming that the consequence would be that I would be fired from my job, uh, lose a lot of friends and colleagues. But in that moment, there was, if I didn't say it then, nothing else would happen. And my wife was the one that kind of pushed me to make sure I did say something about that. Hi, Dr. Williams. This is Eddie Glaude. So I'm so interested in reading, reading your work. Uh, there's something about the relationship between grief and anger uh, in, in what you're writing. The relationship between gun violence, white supremacy, and the bodies you treat. Talk a little bit about what you're trying to do with this book, not just running for, for office, but what you're trying to get us to pinpoint, because you've seen the result on your operating table of the way in which gun violence and this ideology, right, has produced right, the bodies in the wake, as it were. Talk a little bit about what you're trying to achieve and intervene with, with, the, with this book. Well, it, it may seem that we're in a hopeless situation, that we have this impossible task uh, to deal with this escalating gun violence. Like we, are, we have, a, right now, over 500 mass shootings so far this year, the leading cause of death for children, uh, one in five Americans impacted by gun violence. And I want to use this book to show from a lens uh, from someone who's dealt with this on the front lines, someone who's trained on these weapons, and quite frankly, I've lost family members to gun violence as well. So I see it from these multiple lenses, and I want to present that to a reader and pull you into this world so we can walk along this journey and we can learn something along the way. And hopefully at the end, it's meant to be hopeful. I, I provide a roadmap towards healing. And when you're done, you can see the world differently the day after you finish reading the book than you did before. And then the next question is, what will you do about it? So, Dr. Williams, let's talk a little bit about that, what your vision would be if you do head to Capitol Hill. Right now, a, a legislative body that's gripped in paralysis, government shutdown, uh, seems to be on the horizon, an impeachment inquiry of President Biden, also uh, seemingly on its way. Many Americans feel that the Congress is, is broken, maybe permanently so. What, how would you go in there and try to heal that? Well, we, we are not without options here. We can choose to send leaders who embody this ethos of service above before self. I learned this as a cadet at the Air Force Academy. I internalized this as an Air Force officer. I carried this throughout with me when I served as a, as a doctor treating uh, patients. If we'd send more leaders that recognize that what we do in Congress is to serve the country, serve our constituents, we can do better. And when it comes to ending gun violence, we just need people here that knows, knows what it's like. That we've been handed this impossible task as trauma surgeons across the country, where Congress is doing nothing, and they're saying, you deal with the mess. There's no end in sight. The White House has done their job with the Office of Gun Violence Prevention. Now it's time for Congress to do theirs. Wow. The new book is entitled The Bodies Keep Coming, Dispatches from a Black Trauma Surgeon on Racism, Violence, and How We Heal. It's on sale today. Dr. Brian H. Williams, thank you so much for sharing your story. Thank you for being on this morning. Thank you very much for having me.